Hello, welcome to our next podcast about Star Citizen. Uh, I'm Logic, and this is Obsessite. Hello. Indeed. And uh, we're going to be talking about all the stuff that's happened this week um, in Star Citizen, mostly 2.6, some other things, of course. Uh, Lumbalard Engine being one of them. Uh, so, yeah, I guess we'll just get straight on to the biggest topic, I, I think, right now, is the Lumberyard Engine. Uh, well, I, I don't. Everyone seemed to be panicking for a while, um, <laughs> thinking it was going to be like another delay or something like that. You know what I mean? But uh, I think Chris cleared it up quite nicely with that whole post. Uh, where was that post? Where is that post? Come on, don't be a pain, computer. There we go. Like another is. delay or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, so basically he said yeah they only took like two engineers two days to integrate Lumberyard um, it was just really just all back end stuff and they would have uh, announced it earlier with 2.6 earlier in the month if 2.6 had gone live earlier in the month so it just happened to be strange timing with Crytek Cry Cry just having a bit of an issue right now yeah I mean I think it was quite easy for everybody to start uh, worrying that the sky, the sky is falling um, until Chris came in and explained it. Because unless everybody, unless you furiously Google it, you don't really know that Lumberyard is, Lumber, Lumberyard is effectively CryEngine. Uh, I think it's a fork of 3.7, I think. Although I haven't got the post in front of me. So effectively, it's literally just taking advantage of Amazon's back-end netcode, which uh, could be the great netcode fix which has been coming in which is uh really needed i think right now yeah i, I definitely do too okay it is uh I, I did notice that um if you look at the schedule report there was some interesting info in there which was kind of hidden a little bit which i don't know how many people noticed was that uh 2.6 there's going to be a 2.61 version of star citizen and it's going to include a bunch of the networking improvements that were meant originally for 2.6. Um, like the message ordering, uh, serialized variables, um, but network buying culling. Uh, so that'll be interesting to see if it's, you know, and it might be a small patch if it's just those like networking fixes. Uh, yeah, I, I get the impression that 2.6 was pushed ordering, to live uh, to try and stop a lot of the negative comments that the community had when uh, the live stream was uh, quite poorly received um but you know all the work that the testers did in uh, the other <coughs> the Avocati, and obviously the rest of the people who put work in under the ptu made it go live pretty quickly you know and i think it's i think it's ready the uh, various things are a bit rough around the edges what we'll get to later um but yeah you know, I think it's good that it's come out when it did, uh, and I can understand why um, CIG had to keep the lumberyard change under their hat, probably contractually, because of the. Yeah, uh, as Chris fun. said, Chris said in his post that um, they couldn't announce anything until um, 2.6, and that's when they were actually supposed to announce that they'd made the switch. So that's probably why they weren't able to give any more details. All the bespoke work, like they did, like the 64-bit precision planet rendering, planet tech item 2.0, and um, local physics grids and all that stuff, uh, all is untouched and it's just basically just, you know, they just moved it over in two days. I mean, how quick, uh, that must have been such a relief, you know, to get that done. I mean, come on, two days and you're done? I mean, who, who, who does that in two days? I mean, really. <laughs> yeah, not many people. It was impressive. But then again, it's Crytek, so it probably would have just been switching around a few binds in the back end and, and happy yeah. days. True. I'm not a coder. Big disclaimer there. I'm not a coder. You'd probably understand it better than I yeah, would. Yeah, it just seems like yeah, there would have been more problems, but I guess it was such a so close to the art to, to CryEngine that it was really not, uh, you know, they hadn't made too, too many changes that uh, it was so close and they could just flip it over which is good because Cry Crytek are having some issues and they closed like five offices I think it was total which is hard yeah it was hard on a lot of people but definitely yeah I mean I think Christmas this is obviously too. yeah I mean in the long term this is this is obviously the, the right decision uh, and realistically probably the only decision that they had apart from doing it all 
in-house and recruiting people from those five offices <laughs> to work directly for CRG Frankfurt. But um, yeah, you know, it's understandable that the community is a little bit uh, unsettled by it, but I think uh, they'll get used to it. The launch just says clearly that it's uh, Lumberyard supported now. So, and everybody seems to be playing. I played it earlier on myself, both Arena Commander and uh, Star Marine. Didn't have any issues really, obviously, apart from the, the net code issues we've already talked about last week. Yeah. But, uh, I, did I think they'll get there. It's still very, like, there's still definitely some uh, hit lag, you know, where, like you shoot at somebody in Star Marine and sometimes it, you, it, you don't, it doesn't register those hits, like, you know, just because the person's moved on or slightly or something like that. There's definitely some hit reg issues with some lag, and I don't get a really particularly good ping, even though my internet is pretty fast. I don't know where the servers are actually, so um, maybe they're Amazon AWS. I don't know, but uh, it doesn't seem you know like I get a hundred over a hundred ping, and you, know, you really got a two hundred meg download speed on my internet, and it should be quicker than that. Um, yeah, I think they're all going to be AWS now. I think that was part and parcel of the um, the 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 two point six lumberyard switch so i wouldn't be surprised if all the back-end servers are based on aws now so we'll all be at the mercy of where the where the closest you know yeah uh, well risp's route to the aws um core network and then from there to the servers um but yeah i mean i i don't play um star citizen in general star marine and ac um specifically as if they were live so I, you won't find me in there literally all day, every day playing it because there are issues with it. I play in, I test the new features. I get in and play with my ships that I have to see how things have changed. Um, you know, and obviously I try my best to to actually test whatever the flavor of the month bug is they need to get quashed. But um, yeah, you don't play it like I, I play it a little bit more than you do. I play it a fair amount. I, you know, I was played like. Especially at least in, since uh, Citizen Con, I've been playing it pretty much every, every almost every day mm. um just flying ac and then i was in pu for a long time and just messing around in the pu and the pu is even worse now in 2.6 so bad like the frames are just even worse than they were before i think that's why 2.61 is going to come because they have to do something about it because they up the difficulty of the pirates the pirates are practically they take uh, they take me and i kill a pirate in ac in about i don't know a couple, couple of like five to ten seconds depending on what ship is running and in a in a pu it takes me five minutes to kill one pirate um i mean i i do it but it just takes forever and it's just really not fun to be like constantly like moving around and then you know you got 19 frames and you know you move 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 and then you know the guy switches in you know the m50 guy switches like the opposite direction and then you have to move 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 slowly backwards it's just it's painful yeah. it's painful yeah. painful I mean, I had the same problem uh, earlier on today. This morning, I had a, an AC game where I I played once with my Gladiator with the default guns, and I played again with the Freelancer with the default guns. Um, the Freelancer didn't. My session with the Freelancer crashed, but with the Gladiator, we got right to the I think it was Wave 17 and Pirate Swarm, and literally, I was sat shooting a Cutlass. Um, for about five minutes before it blew up. I mean, obviously yeah. the default guns aren't the best loadout, but you shouldn't be able to shoot at a ship for five minutes with hits allegedly being registered because my score's going up with the thing not not blowing up. I'd run well, out of yeah. miss missiles I mean, at this point. It should that? have died. I, I even aimed in the PU. Like yeah, to do it, that would, in the PU. it would suck. I mean, I aimed at the canopy on purpose as well, as I mentioned to you uh, last week, yeah, just to see whether the you know you could get headshots right, but it didn't make any difference. Um, Again, I think it's all going to be linked to the recent switch to um, the AWS netcode, or at least the back-end servers, so there could still be some issues there. But um, yeah, it's not a very fulfilling experience, um, especially if you use the default guns. Yeah, I, I agree. There are some really good guns out there, like the GT220 Mantis is fantastic. I put four of, three of those on the Hornet with the... Uh, apocalypse revenant gatling gun so i had like four gatling guns on my on my hornet and that thing just destroys things in like two seconds flat the mm. tarantulas are also a really good size three weapon and you've got the apars which are amazing size two weapons uh which you can put on a gimbal and they just you put five of them on a hornet 
with the and they just destroy stuff you know so you basically have some really good gimbaled guns right now the APARs are pretty good um, I forget uh, POC is it a POC I, I can't forget what the but the APARs are very good um, are those this size too mass drivers yeah I, I actually have a, I, I have a little check now one second uh, where is it I was talking about this yesterday yeah. do 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 Where's the guns? I gotta bring up SCDB. Hold on. No worries. So I did. I did actually stick a couple of those on the um, under the wing mounts for the Gladiator, and I did a bit better until I ran out of ammo. <laughs> yeah, but if you want to like go for a g for gimbals, then you you should definitely pick uh, the APARs because they're just really good right now. They're just solid weapon that does just a lot of damage. Series two size. Series two. There they are. Series two. Uh, they are the. I can't even. Where the? F hey, Apar Mass Driver. Yeah, Apar Mass Driver. Apocalypse of Arms Strife Mass Driver. That's uh, one of the best guns right now. Tarantula is also decent, but I find the GT twenties for like the size three weapons. If you just want fixed, they're just unbelievably good. Apart from the fact that they take so much ammo. It wouldn't be very viable in um, PU because you'd have to constantly get reload. But in the AC with all the pickups, uh, it really doesn't make a difference. You can just, you know, kill a ship, pick up, you know, 800 bullets and away you go again, you know. So mm. I did notice that the um, uh, the Glaive, is it? Yeah. Uh, the glaive. Yeah, the, 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 the Glaive, glaive with the default, the default loadout. That was just, just mincing through things. There was one guy in the... Um, in the pirate swarm game, he was just blowing everything up with like two or three shots. So, yeah, the, the, the van, the van door good. weapons are okay. <laughs> the Vanguard is also like because it has those ridiculous size three missiles, which basically just kill you in one shot. So they're pretty be beastly right now. Yeah, yeah. The um, I, again, I may there might be a way of doing it. I haven't worked it out, but you because you can't choose which missiles to use when you have more than one set. Right. Um, the um, the. I think it's a size five torpedoes in the belly of the of the gladiator. Once you finally do get a lock on, a lock on, they're really good at taking out the the cutlasses and the um, constellations in the later um, waves. Waves, yeah. But um, yeah, you only get four of those. <laughs> well, they can use pickups and get them back. Yeah, yeah, but I found that with the pickups, you only seem to get the um, small ones, the smaller ones first, unless you've already got a full stock of those. The um, the torpedoes seem to be uh, the last ones that are reloaded, mm. but uh, nah, it's fine. You know, it's just I just I just think that the the guns need to do more damage. Uh, I think some guns need to do more damage for sure. I think I tried to down. I bought some like pyro bursts and you know the shotguns. Yeah, um, on with wreck. And I stuck them on because I was playing with them on the PTU and they were really good. And I stuck them on the ship. And for some reason, half the time I fired the gun, it wasn't registering hits, even at like point blank range. So I don't know what was going on mm. with that um, pyro burst. Maybe it was just lag or something. Because but when I switched out the guns the next round, it was fine. I mean, I swapped them out for GT 220s and it was just destroying stuff. So mm. I don't know. Did you stick ammo in them? Yeah. Well, they were firing. Because so I've they made were, that mistake. They were firing. They were, the guns were firing and I was shooting things and occasionally it would hit but most of the time maybe it was just lag and it was just me I don't know but it was I was like what's going on with these uh, I just spent like 300 3,000 wreck on these guns and they're rubbish but yeah <laughs> trial and error though at least it knows whether you want to yeah, actually spend exactly. well, it was trial and error because I bought those you know mantises which was definitely trial and error and I bought that apocalypse revenant gun oh and the, and the super hornet now is just stupidly overpowered like it's practically impossible to kill them <laughs> They're so really? tough. Yeah, they're so tough now. Like they, the sabers are very sort of squishy. Um, now, but they got good guns. You know, like they always do, and they got decent missiles. But they're very squishy comparatively to the hornets now. So, and they're the hornets just as maneuverable as the saber, apart from the top speed being slightly low, but not by much. So, now the hornet's going to be the new flavor of the month, I think. Yeah. So, just because it's so beefy. Yeah, yeah. Just makes me wonder whether I should hold fire on that upgrade for now. But um, I don't know. The, the Vanguard is just so it's, it's pretty meaty. You know, it's got in the lore, it's going to be even tougher than the Super Hornet. But um, at least that's what they say in the uh, you know the flavor text with the ship. Yeah. Um, 
It but is again, a pretty beastly ship. Like trying to kill them in the if you try you tried to kill them in the AC, right? And towards the end, you know, when you get the vanguard and they're just a pain in the butt. Basically you have to shoot the engines off first. And then once you shot the engines off it's game over, but still it's still annoying. Yeah, exactly. It's just the uh the extra eighty one pound sixty pence you have to pay for it is uh I don't know whether it's worth it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so I know. I mean it is, you know, we've already contributed a lot to the game, so I don't necessarily know that we need to do any more. But um, I definitely think this ship I'm interested in, so I'll probably end up getting a half light. At least, you know. Well, it'll be useful. I mean, I don't I don't have a uh, troop transport, uh, so it'd be, it could be useful from that if we end up going Merc yeah. in the PU. Yeah, it would be useful. Mm. So I'm like, I probably will end up getting it on the sale. Does the sale end today, or is it just today, or is it... Well, according to the um, counter on the top of the website, um, you've got 14 hours, 24 minutes left for the Boxing yeah. Day sale. Well, so you've got a little while left. They definitely do way too many sales, but I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll come to that later, but um, yeah. <laughs> I'll hold my powder on that one for now. Every five seconds. Oh, it's another sale. Maybe it's just this time of year. It's like just like Christmas time. I mean, I don't know. I, d I wasn't what? really paying attention to Star Citizen last last, last year uh, during the first six months. Uh, so uh, just because I was, you know, waiting for them to do something, to be honest. And uh, <laughs> they finally <laughs> did it in three, in, uh, with 3.0. And it was like, okay, I'll, well, I guess I'll get back into this now. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. But yeah, the, there's bit, we're literally suffering from sale fatigue, I think. Yeah, definitely. I am, at least. I mean, I'm like, really, another sale, guys? I just, I don't know. They should have enough money that uh, that uh, they got to put. Well, they did a Christmas day. I think they've done a Christmas borrow a, uh, a festive sale, if you like, um, for the last couple of years. So this is just repeating what they had before. But mm. all the other ones we've had with with the Polaris, um, the introduction of the introduction of war bonds to try and make people put extra money in rather than melting stuff to finance them. Uh, I don't know. Is it some of the things, some of the decisions they've made over the last six months to generate extra revenue, it's um, a bit worrying when you consider how much money we've already yeah. given them. I know it is questionable. And then, you, but then you see some of the trailers, and you w look back at the um, the fidelity of the Squadron Forty Two um, announcement trailer, and the quality of it, just like, oh, that looks amazing. And then you think, well, okay, you know, maybe all this technology comes at a price, and maybe. They do need a few extra bucks to get them over the edge, but uh, yeah. let's see. We'll see what happens, I guess. I definitely think that 3.0 is going to be the sort of. It's got to be the. It's got to be good. Yeah, it's going to be the the. What is it from I, was Iron Man 2? Is it the Cubanistas? <laughs> it's going it's, it's going to be the. That's going to have to be the. Um, you know the uh, killer killer release, I think, because that'll give yeah. people extra than literally just a couple of multiplayer well, modules, really. It's going to be the game, though, isn't it? I mean, if they can do, if they can do what they say they're going to do, it's going to be, you know, you're going to be able to spend so much time just flying around planets and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I'm really interested to see, like, if you can get out of your ship in mid in atmosphere and like fall to the ground, you know, and stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, with a GoPro. Uh, Go no, I forgot, but yeah, it's flat. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. stuff like that. You know, sort of emergent stuff that's, you know, like uh, where they, you know whether you know there's parachutes or you know i don't know halo jumps or uh, in a hop light open a hop light back end and jump out you know well i'll tell you what we'll do when when they put it on the ptu and you can actually do that we'll fly about in my aquila and you can drive the ursa out of the belly of it when we're in atmosphere <laughs> <laughs> and then you can tell me what happens <laughs> uh, oh we all know what'll happen i'll just be dead <laughs> Squid. Oh, might, you might bounce Bounce it's P well, PTU it's like, after with, all with no physics, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Go um, go through the planet, come out the other side. <laughs> I guess, uh, which um, I wanted to talk about uh, Spectrum because that is phenomenally good. Yeah, it's I was such a good service. Really impressed with that. It uh, it really does. Um, it, it 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 just basically shows you something which is it, it, I, I'm I'm glad that it's separate. I'm glad that it's not something that you can um, has an overlay. Although I could expect that it might come in the future. I think oh yeah, I think it will eventually in game. Uh, but it is good that it's um, you know taking the chat room and the forums and mashing them in together, and you have complete control over which ones you follow. It's it's just great. Yeah, fantastic, I spent a lot. fantastic work, Turbulent. 
it was fantastic. I was, I'm loving it. I'm spending all my time in chat, <laughs> just chatting to like people about the flight and ships and stuff like that. So that's great. Just it's I still like only it. available on the PTU um, out al I'm alpha sure. link, isn't it? It's not live yeah. yet. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's still on PTU only, but uh, still, it's still cool though. I really hope they do it soon to live because I think. I don't know. I'm just tired of you know. It, it, it should be live. It's really. No, I've encountered no problems. It's been completely stable. Um, it, it offers a lot of features that the other system doesn't offer. Um, I don't really see the point in delaying it unless maybe it's just for the Christmas ho vacation holidays. You know the, you know the holidays. They're just going to do it when they get back from the off to the office sort of thing. Yeah, um, it, it comes back to the fact that I think uh, the actual live release of two point six wasn't. Although it was in the in the actual timeline planned to be out before Christmas, but I would have expected Spectrum to launch with it as well. Unless there's a lot more, unless they're going to completely redo the website as part of Spectrum and it'll be completely different, then that's a a different uh, beast altogether. Because then you've got all of the shops and you know all the merchandise stuff and all that sort of stuff as well. Perhaps it it literally just isn't ready yet, but the chat bit is. Yeah, which is phenomenal, and I'm really looking forward. I actually. The thing I'm looking forward to is voice chat in Spectrum, just because I'm tired of, you know, having to, like, find Discord and start up Discord. I mean, I like Discord, but, like, a lot of people don't have it. And, you know, when you're playing a game, you, you know, and a lot of people don't have it, I don't really... It's not as engaging when I'm playing AC, when I'm just typing in text. Oh, I just, you know, I had some quite fun times playing with one of the guys. And, you know, he, like, flew into an asteroid, and I was pissing myself with laughter you know <laughs> and he was on text and i just typed lol but it would have been a lot funnier if i was you know if he because he literally flew past me he was shooting a guy that i was shooting at i was chugging away and he just flew past me straight into an asteroid and, and he bounced off it and blew up that was quite funny yeah you should get, get him invited into the org that'll be useful yeah, yeah I'll, I'll see what he says but uh that was it was amused i had a lot of fun actually playing in the ptu a lot met a lot of cool people and uh I uh, played a lot of good AC, and they they were iterating very fast in the PTU on the sort of flight balance changes. Sort of every day there was a new patch with tweaks, and sometimes they went backwards a couple of steps in terms of ability, and then sometimes they went forward a couple of steps, and it was definitely very, very hit and miss with the patches, And but uh, it was nice to see that they were doing it so, iterating so fast. Yeah, especially since it's so close to the holidays. Uh, yeah. th that was obviously some pretty major crunch times going on there. But yeah, uh, I hope everyone yeah it, was, it was impressive, impressive work. Um, you know, and it has improved. I mean, the the, the PTU for those who weren't able to play it um, was worse from a, a, a lag, if we can call it that, perspective than the actual current live build, at least for Star Marine and, and Arena Commander, in my opinion. I mean, my rig might be... Uh, an attributing factor to my experiences because it's a little bit old now um, no uh, it's not because i got the pretty much the best rig you can get for the most part far from the cpu is a little older but it's not that bad um but uh i, I still get it well not in ac but in uh the ptu and uh, star marine my my frames drop considerably you know even when i'm in the star marine i'm at 60 a lot of the time and then all of a sudden it drops down to like 10 or 20 and i'm like that's not very helpful when i'm trying to shoot someone um, <laughs> yeah it's, it's like when you when you first see somebody um it's not as bad as it was in the ptu but you still have that weird lag so it's almost like um you see somebody and then it should play some sort of dramatic little pause like because it kind of stops right and then by that point they've already shot you in the face yeah and uh, uh, I, I did notice that if you can shoot someone in i was reading you could shoot someone in the arm pretty much forever almost and they don't die because they just like bleed you know beat out but if you shoot you know so you have to shoot them in the chest or the head really to get sort of a kill um which needs to be changed i think i think you know if you shoot someone in the arm like 25 times i think they should you know they'll be dead uh, well yeah exactly I, I think they've got to make a balance between realism and uh gameplay i mean we don't really want star marine to be like um, america's army if you've ever played it which is like hyper realism um, you know, whereas if you get shot in the arm, you can't use it, and you'd be running about trying to shoot, use use the assault cannon one handed. Um, but also, by the same token, you shouldn't be able to just pummel somebody in the arm. Each each shot in the arm should take X amount of hit points off, bleed or not, and they should still die. Yeah, I mean, I don't want it to be like COD. I think I want it to be like a little mix of armor versus COD. You know, sort of like halfway in between the two, a little bit of realism, yeah. less less run and gun. 
um because it's very uh it's, it still is very kind of run and gun right now um but i know. think that's what they're going for to be honest a, a mix of the two which will actually make it a unique product rather than just um you know star citizen version of uh of cod or or what have you it'll make it a completely new um product which is what they want really because ultimately once they've sorted out the lag problems and the um you know the pops of grenades when you lob it and they just go bing and then then they actually throw um it really is as much fun as any shooter i've ever played and that's just a small part of of right. what star citizen is going to be you yeah, take if you remember suck, yeah if you remember that it's I mean, you they also have to make the grenades a little bit more visible because half the time you can't even see them until they they blow up and you die. Well, yeah, I literally walk through a door and there's no indication there's a grenade on the floor and I'm dead all of a sudden. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it's mm. grenade spam right now. People just start throwing grenades at an area and just you know you just end up pop 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 and you're dead. You know, sort of. It's a bit ridiculous right now. They need an indicator that either on the HUD. They should be, you know they should what well, you know. There should be an indicator on the HUD because I think you know this is the 29th century. They should be, and, and it's already tracking people, which I don't necessarily think it should do. And if they're, um, uh, you know, you can track the enemy basically using the radar right now. Uh, have you noticed that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it you know it even shows you whether you're higher or lower than they are as well. I know. Um, which is, a which, it, which is it's is good a bit in a way, but I'm guessing that you'll there'll be extra gameplay with that. So that if you're sneaking, you don't show up. If you're firing yeah, a silenced weapon, you, you don't show up, or you can use a jammer where you don't actually show up at all. Depends think, on how far they're going to go. I think they need to fix the grenades, bam. I do think right now someone was mentioning that if you're running, you only show up on the radar, but if you're walking, then you don't show up on the radar. But I haven't had a chance to try that out and confirm whether that's actually accurate or not. But um, if that's true, then fair enough. You know, if you're p pegging it down the corridors, then maybe you should be seen or detected. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we can we can have create a private match and test some of this stuff and report back next week. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Mm. So, uh, what are we doing? Uh, so the probably. Oh, I, I was Go gonna on, say, sorry. the graphics and the sound look uh, really, really, really top, much better than they did in two point five. Have you noticed that? Like similar. Yeah, th there's the been planets. an upgrade in a lot of the textures. I mean, you even have to look at the the, the non two seater Hornets, which is a bit of a bugbear of mine. Uh, all the other Hornets have had their textures upgraded, and they look so much nicer. Uh, but the Super Hornet's still the same one. I'm guessing there's only so much work that they can do. But a uh, bit of a shame. Well, I was talking more about like the, the Crusaders, a lot more vivid and a lot more detailed now, and like a bunch of other planets are a lot more detailed. And the Quantum, Quantum Jump is a lot more. If you look at it, the gra it's way better graphically, comparatively to the old one. Um, there's a lot more. High, the, the 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 it's sort of effects, you know, are uh, way more high, of high fidelity. I mean, I did notice a slight drop in frame rate because of that, in uh, various and the asteroids are a little better quality. Uh, um, there's more of them, obviously, um, uh, and I did. F I did find in a new ICC mission. Um, I don't know if it was ever in 2.5. So spoilers, if you don't want to know about the new ICC mission, uh, look away now or turn off the sound. Uh, it's basically like a, a Van Duel mission, where it's like about like this ship gets attacked by the Van Duel, and then you send you off to this other location where you have to find this like wreck. That was attacked by the Manduel, I think. Uh, so I don't know. I haven't found that one yet, so I have to take your word for it. Yeah, so it's pretty cool actually. It's, it's uh, I I'd never seen it in two point five, so I'd I thought it was new because I played two point five a fair amount. Uh, Pro it probably was. I mean, to be fair, the, because of the performance issues with the um, the PU, even from two point five, and it's as you've suggested earlier on, it's uh, it's worse in two point six, really, uh, especially at peak times. I mean, just for the viewers' um, information, we're on different time zones. I'm in GMT, based in the UK, and you're over in the US. Um, so you'll probably have uh, more issues with peak time play than I might, depending on how they deal with the servers, because they haven't really told us how that works yet. Where they are? Do we even know where they are? I don't know. No, because it doesn't really tell you which one you're connecting to, uh, whether they're just uh, whether they're central and you just basically link to them, or you just get the small updates. We don't really know for sure. At least 
if they've explained it, it's not been recently. Yeah. Well. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I wanted to. Well, you were talking about something just now, which I was thinking about, and when I let you carry on, but I also want to talk about the HUDs in the, in the in the ships that they sort of like did a patch job. Have you noticed that? And for the, like the HUDs in the Super Hornet, because they took away the the green HUD, you know, the, sh the helmet HUD that was there before, and a bunch of the other ships, like the or or Origin ships, like the M50, didn't have a HUD, and it also doesn't have controls, so you can't even look down at the at your little like screens in some of them um but they added this like kind of very te looks very temporary they just basically took a screen and put it in the top corner <laughs> and did the same thing on like two top corners of the screen so you're like it's like oh we don't have a hud let's just stick that one up here and that one up here i really hope that they can start doing real huds where like i can change my weapons i can pick my missiles i want to fire you know i can like group because they remove grouping now i can't group my weapons on the super hornet they move, so you basically there is no option to group your weapons anymore. Oh, okay. Uh, and some other stuff like that, you know, it just seemed uh, like they were like, "Oh crap, well, we don't have time to do a real, um, a real up, uh, real fix for this." Just so we'll just do like this uh, patch hack job. Yeah, maybe item two point oh when it's fully released will give us an awful lot more control. Although it does seem because you obviously look at where they're going with Star Marine and the, and the like halfway house realism side of it, I wouldn't be surprised if you can control what you see in your HUD visor because everybody wears a spacesuit no matter what ship they're in. Uh, well, though technically speaking, you don't have to be wearing a spacesuit when you're flying the bigger ships. Um, but in the single seaters, that they all you all have to wear your own um, right. Uh, helmets uh for what <laughs> yeah because there's no um you know breathable air in the cockpit itself um yeah so i expect they'll probably fix that i mean i noticed when i was flying the freelancer earlier on today that the actual shield strength indicator looks like it's actually in front of the co-pilot so i can't really see now whereas on the ptu it was literally right down the uh, but on the bottom left mfd which you can mm. see from the pilot without having to actually look down so they've moved that, which is probably maybe the one of the precursor changes to the multi crew to try and give the second the co pilot something to do. But mm. for Super Hornets and so on, you should be able to do it all from the pilot because the Rio seat at the back is mainly for the turret and for communications as as again, this is going from the flavor text on the actual ship itself in the store. Yeah, I just was it just I don't know, it seems like they should do something with E HUD just because right now it's just it's just a pain you know and there's no the other thing countermeasures i mean why do you have to switch between countermeasures shouldn't a computer be able to detect what what missiles are being fired at you based on the you know icons on the bottom and then deploy that for countermeasure without having to go click right you know and what if when they add different counter different missile styles or different countermeasures are they gonna have to like you're gonna have to like cycle through them to find them by the time you and the missiles are so quick by the time you cycle through them they the missiles already hit you yeah, I mean, again, it's a little bit of the gamification of the system because you'd expect that in the far future, your the AI or the compute, ship computers would know, right, okay, um, I'm being f shot at by a heat-seeking missile. I will deploy uh, chaff. Right. No, flares, no flare. sorry. Wrong one, yeah. flares, right? right. Or yeah. I'm being shot at by a, a, rad a, a radar-seeking missile, so I'll deploy uh, chaff. chaff. And right. they just do it for you. Um, whereas, obviously, because it's... Uh, they're trying to make it make the experience like a world war two strike it's like god uh, dog fighting because you know the way the yeah, technology but, seems to be going you you don't need pilots in the future because you just have drones doing it right yeah but you could come on you could you the, the annoyance of having to switch between them especially when the missiles are so quick that you're like okay so i just saw that that's a chaff missile so hold on our alts or press you know hold down double tap or whatever you want to do to change your, your countermeasures so you you know because you're on heat seekers by the time you've done that the missiles already plowed into you, and it, you well know. you just mentioned something there i mean the, obviously a lot of the other um commands are, uh, are based on context so for example if you hold down alt and an f uh, you can you get out your ship right mm -hmm. so why couldn't they just have one key tap for flares hold down for chaff that way you don't have to worry about what switching between them you just press it yeah, I mean that just seems like unnecessary addition of the skill. I mean, I mean, what happens when they had five different countermeasures or six countermeasures? Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 
again perhaps they just have universal countermeasures <laughs> or something like that because it is overly complicated especially when you given how fast the missiles are these days and the fact that you're close in because the scm speeds have been changed and they're very powerful as well those missiles, especially there's like anything above size three or above is is like pretty much death to anything anything any single seater uh, uh other than the hornet i mean like you can kill a saber with one s3 missile um so yeah so basically like yeah. they either you know either slow down the missiles make it easier to use chaffs or something something the system and sometimes when i press the chaff or the countermeasure button i have to press it, it doesn't work for some reason like i press it once and it doesn't work so i have to press it again and then it starts you know firing off chaffs i don't know it's definitely could, bu- could uh, be lag some, yeah bug or a lag or something but it happens every time i do it like so i don't know it's strange yeah yeah well, because one of the things I mentioned there was um, the fact that they've slowed everything down, which I guess brings us to something else we were going to talk about, which was the flight balance for SCM speed and so on, now that we're actually 2.6 live. Yeah, I think they need to, uh, me, my opinion is they need to up the speed slightly. I, don't th- I think they cut it too much because it feels very, it feels like I'm running a capital ship, but I'm a small dogfighter. You know, like I'm chugging along. <laughs> Unless you're an afterburner, basically SCM speed is basically like, oh, I'm in a capital ship, sort of waving as I pass the people. <laughs> <You know. laughs> I'm just tr- oh, trucking, it. A- trucking along, honking my horn. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like you're going 30 mile an hour in a 70 zone, waving at all the passengers, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I must admit, I, I do like the new implementation where they've actually had, uh, you know, put crews and afterburner into the same thing. I like I that. I like it the works. afterburner system, but the SCM but I- speed still needs tweaking. It needs increasing slightly. Yeah, I mean, I haven't actually flown um, the... Uh, the constellation I have because you can't fly it in Arena Commander for obvious reasons, and the PU I, I just can't go on there right now because it, I did try after 2.6 went live and it's just like uh, it's just not fun. There's only so much testing you can do basically before you just don't enjoy it anymore. Right. Uh, but the freelancer, for example, I spend most of my time slight side slipping, literally unless unless you turn um, flight assist or whatever they call it these days off and actually just do a spin round and then basically thrust the other way to turn you around. If you actually turn around, you have to use the afterburner, but you still, you go around in a massive arc. And if you're having to dodge all of the asteroids in there, it's literally really tough to actually dogfight properly with a, uh, with a freelancer. I know you're not supposed to because it's like, you know, it's not, not, it's a, not, a, it's not a fight. It's not a fighter, but still you'd expect it to be a little bit more maneuverable because it's a medium sized ship. It should be almost as maneuverable as a cutlass. But it's not. At least it doesn't seem to be. Yeah. Well, I, I I don't actually personally like the freelancer as a ship. I just find it a little ugly. I guess. I don't know. It's prettier than it used to be. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's. I do. I'm a more of a like the Drake style, and uh, and uh, I actually don't mind the Aegis, and I like Anvil too. Uh, but uh, but yeah, uh, M- Misk is not really in my style. It's a little uh, bubbly, like uh, you know. You see those cars going down the street in uh, real life and the bubble cars like, was it the Nissan Cube and stuff like that? And you're like, ah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking, I'm just waiting for them to put the um, the Freelancer Miss in because that's got a shed load of missiles and right now that'd be amazing. Well, anything with the good missiles right now is amazing. Like the Vanguard is just unbelievably good in, in AZ just because it has those uh, those four lasers on the front and it has the Gatling if you want and uh, and it has like tons of missiles you can just drop and you know drop some s3s you know some big missiles and uh the gladiator doesn't it's just so slow and clunky uh comparatively to the vanguard and the vanguard's bigger so i don't really get that but uh i wouldn't be surprised if the gladiator hasn't been touched because i think i wouldn't be surprised if it's one of the the rarest ships as far as player ownership is concerned because whilst it is whilst it does look pretty cool looks like the bat plane right um it's it's just the the mechanics of getting in and out are a nightmare. Like if you could actually open the canopy to get out as the pilot for EVA, that would be so much easier. Because right now, if you want to EVA out when you're flying about, you have to wait for the belly to open and then the seat to deploy, and then you just float out. It's just not doesn't work now with the new EVA mechanics. Before, when they first released it, when it was sat in the hangar, it was great. It was just amazing. It was probably my favourite ship 
um, looks as far as how it looks. Yeah, it, and it's had. A, I think it's had an upgrade too from look, running around in the hangar. I think the, they've upgraded the textures on it, but how you get in and out of it needs to be looked at because it's it doesn't really work with the EVA mechanics. It just takes too long to get out. Yeah, I know. I mean, all the EVA mechanics need a little work entering and exiting the ship. You know, when especially even like uh, even the Hornet, and you know, you just you have to get close to click use, and then all of a sudden you appear right above the cockpit and float down into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the stuff they're going to fix. I mean, I know, obviously, I know the, stuff the, fix, but. the amount the amount of updates that they've had, you know, two point six. I wasn't expecting to have this much content in it, but it's still the basics of what you want to see in the fi- in the final solution. Like, for example, with the Star Marine as it is now, none of the extra stuff that you were expecting were in it. So there's n- there's only the frag grenades. There's none of the decoys or the deployable shields or right. any, any of that stuff that they've shown. So I don't know why they're keeping it back. They need to they need to fix the networking. I think that's the, I think that's the highest priority. That's why 2.61. I mean, I wasn't expecting like another patch till 3.0. Um, mm. And there. Yeah, it wasn't on the timeline, was it? Well, it wasn't on the time. No, but it, I, if you check the schedule report, um, that it's on there as like two point six one. It's very hidden. You have to like literally scroll down to where networking was in the schedule report, and it says two point six one. You know, um, so I don't know. They must have been like, yeah, this PCU sucks, so we need to do something about that. At least get the frames up to you know thirty at the minimum on average. You know, so it's it doesn't feel like a. A, uh, a slideshow basically is what it feels like to me right now when you're fighting in a in a sort of dogfight situation it feels like a slideshow because it can e- easily go down to 10 frames uh you know and 10 frames is like you know it reminds me of playing games in the you know in the in the 80s you know when you used to wing command you know even like wing commander when you look at it now it's, it definitely feels jerkier than you know instead of 60 frames super silky smooth you know yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got. A, I think I picked a load of those up at the last a good old game sale. I haven't played through many of them yet, but I, I tend to see the people on the top of the leaderboard, and it's hard to actually see what they're actually using. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if the ones at the top are the ones are using the shotgun, uh, because you don't need to be that accurate with it. Yeah, it, uh, it, it just it just it hurts up close. It does a little less damage than it used to in the PU, actually, because I've tried even like the the cutlasses have those shotguns in in AC, and uh, they they don't do that much damage anymore. It used to be like you would just get mullered by them, and it would just be game over as soon as they got in close. But now it's not so bad. They can easy, well, at least in the Super Hornet, because I fly the Super. Oh, Hornet. I was talking get... about Star Marine. Oh, you're talking about Star Marine? Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought completely should... different there. I've lost the right. plot. Lost... <laughs> <laughs> I I thought you were talking about the uh, AC, but uh, shotguns. Yeah. But uh, oh, Star Marine! I haven't played the shotgun. I don't know if I, I actually only use the the bearing and the laser rifle. Uh, yeah, laser rifle's nice. Uh, that the accuracy on that is point pinpoint basically. As long as the people, as long as the people can stay still long enough, you to actually shoot them because <laughs> it's quite hard to predict. I'm noticing with them the, using the a lot of hip firing uh, over down down scope, like because. Down scope. I mean, you really got to be really accurate with it, and there's a lot of kick to the gun, and you know you got to hit them in the head basically with down scope. And I just find that running in with hip fire accuracy, you just getting in close with them, and just you know it's game over for them. Then once you once you once you're on the hip fire when you're in close, but they definitely need some work on their um, guns. They need some work on their hip boxes. They need some work on their lags, lag. Uh, so I think they'll eventually. Uh, get it it just will take a little time i think hopefully by 2.61 when they introduce those networking changes that it'll improve the the performance so yeah they're, they're definitely going in the right direction you can see that the ingredients that they're putting into the uh, star citizen pie as it were is uh, going to produce something epic when it's finished but um it is a least. lot a lot of people have been there since the beginning uh you know 10th of october 2010 they're going my god we're 2017 and we've you know, we haven't even got the first few episodes of, of Squadron Forty Two yet, um, so I can see why people are getting impatient. I mean, they, yeah, they should be getting impatient. It's a bit, uh, it's taken way longer than it should. I mean, they made some mistakes with uh, what's that company that did the whole first Star Marine implementation? I forget what the name of that company is, but yeah, they made some uh, mistakes with that. Yeah. Um, I can't remember. And they spent obviously spent some money on that, so that was wasted money. Um, 
you know they you know they they did it they did they, they've run into a few mistakes they've done it you know encountered problems that they weren't inco- expecting to encounter so you know game development's a tricky thing um so especially when you're building a studio at the same time uh, oh so. yeah definitely i mean it, once it's all up and running and everything's dealt with i expect that we'll see uh, you know extra bits and pieces coming out pretty quickly well, I uh, think the, yeah i think but the, thing, things like lumberyard they need to be careful they don't do it too often because the press will crucify them for it even if the intentions are, are, are good and obviously there's only so much bad press that any person who sat on the fence will take before they go nah not gonna bother um yeah because yeah, there's there's so many other good games out there um you know you don't want to people to start thinking no i'm not going to bother you want everybody to jump on the ship and they've done really well up until the last seven or eight months and there's been lots of negativity which has caused issues and hopefully you won't see any more of that next time the next live stream they do I expect will probably be you know absolutely perfect hopefully I think it'll be if they don't. I, like I said, they should do recorded versions. They don't need to do live streams. No, no. I mean, incidentally, this is the first time me and you have done this on Twitch Live. So uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's hope let's hope that we're not actually <laughs> being Suck massive it. massive hypocrites. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, this for is our first, our first time, time we don't ever know. doing on Twitch. So you know, you got to give us some slack. You know, it... exactly. Right, but it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Got to start uh, somewhere, right? You got it. Yeah, definitely. It'll be interesting to see how this uh, works out. This whole Twitch thing. Mm. Uh, I'm excited to see if we actually get any people interested in our little podcast. Well, we <laughs> we did have um, we had three people viewing a little bit earlier on. Now there's only the one, which uh, I don't know. That might even be me because I'm watching the chat. <laughs> but hey, you know, it's it might... uh, what it's one o'clock in the morning my time, so the chances yeah. are yeah, a lot of people will be yeah. and it's Boxing Day night. Yeah, I'm probably yeah. going to get uh, a bollocking off the wife for actually doing this now, but uh, it's good. You know, we need to talk about it. There's lots of interesting things that's happened over the festive period. Indeed. So, so what Go about ahead. this Hoplite and or Warden then? Where do you sit on that? Well, I, I'm st- I'm thinking of buying one or the other, and it's so like there's not no real incentive to buy the Warden right now over the Hoplite, but. I think eventually the Warden will be probably a better ship fit for me, so I'll probably end up just buying the Hoplite until the Warden becomes point. You know, there's a point to buying the Warden. Um, there's no real point right now. So, uh, but other than the bed, I mean, that's the only thing that the Warden has over the Hoplite right now. Um, the weapons are the same. The missile loadout's the same. The colors are slightly different, but yeah, you know, it's like mm. can neither here nor there. So. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't think I don't think you can use the bed on the on the uh, hangar ready module uh, mo- model of the warden at the moment. Anyway, because I did have one a while back before I melted pretty much most of my stuff to get the explorer pack back in the day, um, which I still think was a good idea. But it does mean I can't. I'm not as flexible anymore with uh, melts and upgrades right. as I used to be. Yeah, that's, that's that's a that is an issue. I mean, I'm probably gonna just get the hop light straight up just pay straight up war bond cash for it and then uh because i have um because then i can always cc you upgrade the lti to uh the warden whenever it, whenever i need you know whenever i want and i'll still get the because i don't think the warden is uh, lti right now so no no you can probably i'm not sure you can probably get it but if you can it'll be like the um holiday version with x four, mounts of worth of insurance years. Yeah, four years I think it is. Well, at least it was at the holiday, uh, the anniversary stream a while ago. Okay, so I, I don't know if we don't have. Do we have anything else to talk about today? Uh, well, let's have a quick look what we got here. So we had a few talking points to go through. I mean, we talked about all the new ships I think last week. Yeah. Um, in two point six. Uh, but did, you, did, you, yeah. I go did, on, tell us I, about your Uber Caterpillar. I got the Spark Pirates one caterpillar. I'm very pleased with it. It looks very nice. Um, it's very sexy, and uh, I'm very pleased. It took me a couple of tries to get Pirates one done, um, uh, but I've been doing it consistently every time I try now. So it just uh, took a little practice. Finding the right weapons is very key. I found that the the GT two twenties were very key in me being able to do it by myself or even with a buddy. Um, so yeah, I mean it, the the game is very 
the stock stuff doesn't really work very well at least i don't if you want to like finish the swarm that is mm. um yeah i think that's the issue you spend a lot more time messing about with the loadouts than i do i tend to just jump in and use the use the uh defaults so i might have to start playing with those a bit see if i can get a little bit more teeth uh, on my ships because a lot of the, a lot of the ships i have i can't actually fly because they're not released yet um i think i've got the herald the gladiator the freelancer and that's it everything else i can't fly i noticed uh, that i noticed one thing the redeemer's a gunship uh, and what's the difference between a gunship and a fighter and a long-range fighter um the gunship is literally not so not necessarily long range but tends to have a lot more guns on it sounds a bit obvious but um right. i think seems... the idea of the warden is is a long range recon stroke um escort um fighter uh with an absolute ton of uh, survivability whereas i think the redeemer is more a case of get everybody on board it's basically a, uh, the hoplite on steroids and the reason why they came up with the hoplite is because the redeemer needs to be completely redone because it's too small for the um the new mod player models there's, there's a, everything is a little bit out of whack for it mm -hmm. it's a great it's a great model and it was you know a worthy winner of the next great starship but there's gonna have to be a lot of work before it can be used so what ships do you think will be coming in 3.0 because they still have the caterpillar coming in 3.0 apparently um in, on their little blog you know oh the, right yeah. in the bl blog information you know on the schedule um, at the bottom there's uh it's like yeah, hey, yeah. The cat's still coming in three point oh, so I'm I'm really open for the cutlass, and the blue and the and the red and the red. I think. Yeah, also, yeah, yeah. The new cutlass was, looks awesome. Yeah, hopefully they'll do all three of them will pop up. Um, that'll be nice. Obviously the Ursa and Rover and the Caterpillar and the Dragonfly. My bad, my brain wasn't working there. Um, and the and the Aquila, I think. And That's the Aquila. Three so I think those would probably be the ones that are coming 3.0, depending on when 3.0 comes, because if it like takes six months and it's out in June for some reason, um, then uh, you know there might be some more. Because you know I'm sure the ship pipeline is is separate from like the planetary tech and the and the back end yeah, this yeah. tech and you know so uh, I think that's why we got the Caterpillar and the uh, 85X um when we got them um because they were originally going to be in 3.0 and 3.0 is going to be december so yeah yeah i was really surprised that the cat came out without the dragonfly to be honest uh, I, I would have thought that it would have come out at the same time because um when we saw it in the citizen con announcement where they were using them mm -hmm. it looked pretty much done but i'm guessing it's done from a land base but they haven't sorted out the space-based um flight model for it yet i wouldn't be surprised if the freelancer dur comes out in 3.0 because there's obviously some exploration elements in it which is why the aquila is actually there um the 315 p is already in and uh, the other um exploration ship other than the carrack which i can't wait for because yeah, i do have Carrick, i do have one of those i want a carrack so bad i mean i saw the scale have you saw there's sort of like a video or a picture of the, the scale of the carrack like they put a person next to the carrack and i didn't realize how big it was i was like holy crap that's huge it's like it's very misleading in its size yeah, yeah, yeah. it's probably got bigger than the last time because every ship that's been relatively large has got bigger than it was i don't think it'll have the same refactoring that the um the idris had when they just you know made it much bigger than it was right. um but i think it'll still be a bit bigger <laughs> after all because of what they want to do with it um but yeah i'm looking forward to that but I, i'd like to see one of the freelancer variants it was one of the you know the freelancer base has been there for a while i can't imagine it would take too much to put one of the variants in because the textures are the same it's just a couple of extra bits and pieces however it depends on how they're going to implement them because the the original freelancer dur model was you know a fair bit different to the basic one um but we'll see i'd like to see i just like to see some of the variants coming in for the slightly bigger ships rather than just going oh here's your cutlass black the other ones will come at some point because they're not important to squadron 42 but right. ultimately people have paid money to actually use these ships and when 3.0 comes out a lot of the at least exploration anyway i don't know maybe freight as well although that's one of the later ones cargo it, the, no cargo yeah. is, is three is three mine oh is it is, mine oh, okay. is three one um maybe, maybe we might see one of the hull then maybe one of the hull variants might come out as well the whole c because it's the most uh 
common ship in the uh, in the in the universe. Apparently, that would be quite cool if that came out. Yeah, I'm looking forward to when there's actually NPCs flying around doing missions too. That'd be cool. Yeah, it'd be good to make it feel a little bit alive. But then they have to sort out the netcode. Otherwise, we'd just basically see things jagging about all over the shop if it was if they were yeah. based on the server. And we had to get the packets back to show us what's going on. Yeah. I think everything depends on that netcode because right now the PU is practically unplayable for me at least, which is really sad because I really like the PU. Yeah, I would love to um, do what other people have done um, so they can actually get the offline version of it, but I'm not prepared to do that because I want to experience it when it comes out uh, and actually give feedback on what the actual iterative, pro iterative changes are uh, before it actually is you know playable because whilst it's whilst it's good to actually do what you've seen on some of the other youtube channels yeah i don't i don't want to do it that way it'd be it'd be spoilers i'd rather actually log in in, in like 3.5 or whatever it is when they've actually fixed everything and it's it's silky smooth and go yeah all that pain was worth it otherwise you know you're not really seeing the slight changes that's just me maybe i'm just uh you know i like inflicting pain on myself <laughs> perhaps yeah. who knows Chris did say that some of those, like, you know, the fact that, like, mining and farming and all those other ones that are, like, from 3.1 to 3.4 um, may actually end up being in, like, a, a sort of, like, they may, like, change in positions and depending on, uh, so they may end up with, like, less patches during the year and, like, say, just, like, two or three patches. So you may get to 4.0 before, before, like, 3.4 or 3.3, he said, based on, you know, sort of what their patch frequency is like. So you may get more content in one patch rather than spread out across four patches, which I which I thought was interesting stuff. But uh, Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they came out with some sort of uh, profession patch, um, which, release, which releases most of them in one go. Uh, depends on what the end of the hood uh, requirements are for them. Yeah, but mining is probably going to be one of the more complicated ones to do because you actually have to go to an asteroid or a planetoid and be able to find the um, the veins to mine them, and then you have to be able to find a way to have the mechanics to create something from nothing, and then also deal with that without breaking um, breaking the database. <laughs> yeah, also the fact that you know when I mean, yellow is going to become like a party party house then i think you know sort of everyone's like with their reclaimers or whatever ship it happens to be <laughs> just like farming yellow and what happens when do they get rid of an asteroid does it respawn eventually i'm assuming i'm assuming so yeah i mean they're gonna have to otherwise you just run out of resources and then it'll be no fun for anybody um but obviously yellow is going to be a hot spot for everything you're gonna have all the uh, the yar brigade going and <laughs> p pillaging everybody's booty um and you'll also have us trying to defend them or being paid by people to defend them, rather. Um, um, you, you know, it, it should be good. There's, I think this 2017 is going to be a big year for Star Citizen. There's an awful lot that is expected to come out. Uh, and with a bit of luck, we'll still be here to experience it and uh, talk about it. What are, you, are you talking about like the end of the world or something like that, are you? No, no. <laughs> whether we get we get told we suck oh. so badly, we we actually go and hide under our desks forever. Okay, <laughs> not like we expected that to happen, of course. <laughs> oh, well, I think we're gonna call it today. But uh, I wanted to ask you a question before um, we go because I saw you you have No Man's Sky because I don't have No Man's Sky. Uh -huh. And uh, do you think I should get it? Because I was thinking about it. You know, I'll have to come back to you on it because I've pl I haven't played it since the last since the patch was released, which allows you to go and create bases and stuff. I played the initial release and I probably played it for about seven or eight hours. I'm not sure what my Steam. Uh, in fact, I'll have a look. I'll tell you how many hours I've spent on it. Uh, not many, because it was good, but it's just I play Elite Elite Dangerous a lot, as I've said before uh, on the Xbox One. I uh, also have it on the PC, but um, the Xbox One's a lot more comfortable to sit on the sofa or on the big telly and play it rather than here on the computer. And uh, it's just, uh, I saw that you know, there's an awful lot of potential there, and with the patch, it might be a lot better. I don't know. I haven't actually played it yet, mm -hmm. but um, there just wasn't enough diversity. Some of the different plants you go to, once you've seen the first two or three or half a dozen, let's be kind, right? They, you can see that they're all procedurally generated, but the, they're all kind. It's like, oh, the grass is a different color, um, and this is this is like a giant T Rex thing with a rat face, 
which is <laughs> some of the things that comes comes up with is just like just they just look silly mm-hmm. like and on some planets the same thing uh you know might be a herbivore but on another planet where it's the same thing but instead of having crabs legs it'll have spiders legs so it looks pretty much exactly the same and it's like you know an apex predator you know and it will just you know hunt you out and destroy your eyeballs um it's you know it's fun but it's, it's just cheap it was that's why i'm asking because like it's, it wasn't was it wasn't what it was sold at but it is good fun i mean how much are they asking for it 30 i think now 30 Steam, bucks right? 30 yeah so uh, 30 dollars or something like that and i, I mean like, at the end of the, the end of the day you'll get a lot more out of it than i did because the new upgrade allows you to build your own bases so you yeah, can set a know. set a planet as your 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 uh, hq which is where you spawn spawn to uh, and apparently there's a, a mechanic where you can actually go back to your home base instantly without having to hyperspace back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, so, that. so yeah, I'd, I'd pick it up. It's, uh, it's worth, uh, it's worth 30 bucks. Definitely. Yeah. I was, I didn't actually pre-order it like everyone else. Cause I thought, you know, don't know the company very well. They, they seem a little, you know, uh, very light on details, shall we say. Uh, and I know a lot of people got a little annoyed with them because they promised stuff that wasn't in the game. Um, I said that's why the Steam reviews suck. You know, it's like you didn't pro- you didn't give me multiplayer, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, but a lot a lot of it is um, sheep reviews, and what what I mean by that is you get um, a bit of bad press, and everybody goes, yeah, 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 and me. I mean, oh, I should have called it flaming pitchfork reviews because everybody's like, yeah, let's burn them. You know, rather than actually playing it themselves, they kind of just jump on the bang wagon and go, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. You know, rather than actually being objective. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, they certainly didn't give you what you expect, what you were supposed to experience, because a lot of people thought it might have been multiplayer at one point, but it isn't. You can meet other players, but you can't, like, you know, join a party and explore with them. Can you meet people? Jamming. Can you, like, find other people? I thought that, that yeah, you, wasn't... Yeah, you, you, you can do it, but it's, it's like, really rare. Whether this new patch is actually you can change that, I don't know. I've not played it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Although what I'll, I would what I, I would do is if you got, got I got thirty dollars, I can afford it, so I'll just pick it up and you know. It's like... <laughs> you you can afford it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, what what I would do is is have a look at uh, Space Hulk Deathwing as well. That's actually good fun. I've got terrible reviews too. So. Yeah, it did, but it's it. <sighs> The problem is you got all the Call of Duty players who are used to being able to jump off walls and somersault and you know fire <laughs> in the face and look all that sort of shit. Whereas um, this is is a quite a. I mean, I played the Space Hulk uh, tabletop game back in the day. Um, so what the actual game is based on. So seeing how they've recreated what it would, in your mind's eye, be like to be stomping through one of these like conglomerations of the space hulks and having these bloody mindless gene stealers come in to try and rip your face off it's actually really good the sounds good the the actual design of the um hulks itself are amazing um it is multiplayer co-op as well so you can actually you know me and you could go and try and hmm. you know, go burn some xenos and all the rest of it. it is it is good fun i like it but i saw you, um, pick, I saw you picked up uh that space uh, a game, the new one uh, with the little like buildy game, the one in Alpha. Oh, the, uh, and I yeah. was gonna buy it, and I was like, I gotta ask, I gotta ask you, whether that's any good. I I must admit, I I kind of like it. Um, I played it a little bit. Um, it was cool. yesterday. Astron Astroneer on it or something. Um, so, hang on. Uh, yeah, Astroneer. Um, I was gonna, I was gonna, because I'm looking for a new game because I just finished the, the one game I was playing other than Star Citizen, and uh, I'm like, eh, what should I do now? Oh, I would try No Man's Sky, or I might try Astroneer or something like that. But, yeah, I mean, Astroneer is obviously it's early access, so they're adding to it all the time. Um, there's a, a lot of scope to it, but I don't think it's procedural. I think the planets are. are, are uh, no, they are. It says they are. It says they're procedural. Oh, does it? Planets. Yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, I mean, I've only I've only played it the once, so I have not actually launched in and started again. I just played on the, whichever was spawned there. But um, I hear it's light on it's, content, but uh, but I was that's why I didn't really. Eh, I was like, well, I think I've played a couple of hours. Um, you, there's lots of things to explore. There's things to to, to actually um, research, and yeah, you know, if you sit here and play it for ten, twelve hours or whatever, you might find everything right now. But they will add to it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, what if you like? If you're looking for a game which has got a load of content in, which is good fun to play, um, Kerbal Space Program is quite good fun. Uh, I'll try, I'll that's, check it out. 
yeah it's it's a good laugh it's um basically you start off with this uh on, on the planet kerbin where all the kerbals live uh and you run their space program and you have to do missions uh there's also like uh just build stuff and see see whether you can how badly you can blow up your kerbals uh, but it, it is good fun you know, it's obviously a um a simulation of how you actually get into because you get into orbit do missions you can send probes up there you can try and get to the moon and there are other planets in the solar system that you need to try and get to um uh, it's good fun i mean if you have a look at uh, scott manley's um youtube channel mm-hmm. um he's got a load of videos on uh on the kerbal space program as, as well as some introduction ones watch those it is good fun i, I enjoy playing it i haven't played it in, a, in a, probably a year but i played it buckets back in the day it, it is a good laugh oh, well i'll check it out i guess we should call it a day because my kids want to come in the room and i i'm gonna have to i can't let them in right now so uh, yeah well, it's, it's 20 past one so i probably should uh okay, well, <laughs> think about getting my head down thanks for watching and uh i guess we'll try and do this again uh next week uh uh which is what day of the week is sunday we're, we're gonna get it on monday because uh of Christmas, yeah, obviously. Christmas. Um, so that'll be the f- maybe we'll do it on his Monday. Again. Be New Year's New Year's Day would be Sunday. Yeah, we might be able to do that. I don't know. We'll see. Monday or sometime during that week. Uh, uh, Sunday or sometime during that week. I, I mean, uh, are you work? Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll discuss it. Yeah, no worries. We'll we'll be back. Okay, we'll be back. You've, and you have been warned. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching and uh, uh, have a good uh, New Year's. Hopefully, it's a uh, a fun one. Indeed. I'll talk to you.